Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center for tonight's OLA Junior B Lacrosse between the fifth ranked Guelph Regals and the eighth ranked Owen Sound North Stars. Hello, everyone. I'm Spencer Byers alongside Steve McCarthy and Steve. Big game tonight for Owen Sound, currently tied for seventh in the West with Cambridge. And a win tonight would put them just above those Highlanders and might give them a little more favorable matchup instead of facing Six Nations. They would face Alora. Yep. Yeah, and they played Alora real tough, so that would certainly be uh, beneficial if they can uh, secure that seventh spot. And we're going to quickly go to the National Anthem, and we're right back to break it down before the game starts. As we were talking about, this Guelph team is in fifth spot. They have clinched the fifth spot. They cannot go any lower, but they do have an opportunity to catch St. Catharines, who are in third place, only three points ahead of them, and the Windsor Clippers, who are in fourth place and are only two points ahead of them. So this game is important for them. And again, you see their Owen Sound tied with Cambridge, but have two games in hand. So they have a very good opportunity here to be able to move themselves up and maybe face a Laura instead of Six Nations. And even theoretically, they could catch Hamilton for six, which would mean they could play one again of one of those three teams, the St. Cath uh, St. Catharines, Windsor, or Guelph. So a lot of movement can happen, Steve. I wouldn't say you and I expect a lot of movement, but there still is an opportunity if Owen Town can heat up at the right time. Yep, yep. They're going to need, uh, again, to lock things down tonight defensively. Uh, uh, they're up against an opponent that has uh, a good scoring ability, an offense that's uh, got some, some of the top scorers in the league, and... Uh, you know, we'll see if uh, Nick Sanderson's up to the task, which he's been for the most nights. He's been in that for, uh, for Owen Sound since coming over from Newmarket. Yes, he has Nick Sanderson, the midseason trade with the bottom-ranked Newmarket Saints. They only have one win on the year, so he's had a lot better luck here in Owen Sound. As the faceoff is won there by Guelph, they will have the first possession. And I, think, I don't think I mentioned this though, off the top. Marcus Kellehern and Owen Opania or Pena, pardon me, are the two of the top five leading scorers, including Marcus Kellehern being number one in the league at over a ton as he shot scores. And already on the board are the Regals. And that looks to be Owen or Pena, who we talked about, who I just mentioned. So I guess speaking you shall receive, Steve, is early are up the Guelph Regals. Yeah, again, that's another disturbing uh, first shot goal. It's a sort of haunted this team a good part of the season. Again, and, uh, you know, Calder Adams has to get up on top and take that top side away and not let Orpena come around and shoot from there. So uh, hopefully, they, again, they'll eliminate that time and space if they want to, uh, you know, make them work harder and get, have to get inside to score their goals tonight. You know, and if Guelph again wins the faceoffs, so look at another chance here with on the offensive end. I was just mentioning Kelleher's got 104 points, so... And he's the only player over a ton. Is that the save by Sanderson? And at least the second one didn't go in too, Steve, as Calvin Stewart now in possession. Yeah, you know, I think this team, as well as most people have seen Nick Patterson between the pipes this year, he's uh, he's been counted on numerous times. So uh, I'm sure he'll shake that first goal off. And around into the middle. Coglin shot right into the net there of Ty Fox, and now here come Guelph on the transition game. Looked like a breakaway there for a second, but they were able to get up the defenders just quick enough to stop that in its tracks. And again, here come the Regals for another offensive possession. Oh, 
Around the top go the blue shirts. That shot from well out goes wide and around. It will bounce up. Will it be retrieved by Owen Sound? It will not, so the Regals will still have a chance here. But a change right at the shot clock will give Owen Sound the opportunity here to get a change. And Calvin Stewart again will be the transition player in this situation. Hands it off there, it looks like Hemstock, and it is. That will play it across the top. Through a bump there is Curtis Arnold. He gets manhandled. Still has a chance, though. I think he might have possession. Watch sure actually who has the ball right now. And it's stuck in between quite a few different shirts here. Where is the ball? I don't know. It's stuck in his shirt there. The ball comes out, and possession will go the other way in favor of Guelph. I'm not sure if that ball got stuck in under some padding there, Steve. It looked like it could have been in somebody's armpit. And uh, if the defender knew it was there, good on him. He allowed the 30-second time to elapse and uh, create that turnover. Around the top go the Regals. Two-man game works again. That shot off the post. It will sky, but possession will stay with Guelph. Sanderson got to be thinking that post after this opportunity for Guelph. It's in the middle again. Round the defender. That shot low and saved by Sanderson. And now quickly up is that ball air milled over Marcus gardner Batak, And possession will go right back to Guelph, who will quickly get it up the floor. And now it is Marcus Kelleher. He gives it off to Brett Vince. Around the top it goes, mishandled and taken away. And Owens doesn't get a chance to break here. That's Ethan Kerr, who lost possession and will go right back to Guelph. But at least it's a little bit farther than where it started. And Kelleher. Down to the corner, back up top. Looking for, uh, look to be Kelleher again. He's getting harassed there in the middle by Calvin Stewart. Around the top there, Vince drops it. Can Owen Sound gain possession? They will not, but the check will get Owen Sound the ball inside the zone there. Up, well, that was Gavin Downs, the one going down on that one. But Downs now with possession. Thought about shooting it, we'll hand it off to Moran. The first time I've seen Carter Moran on the floor here tonight. Ran across the top. Tyson Morrison, that shot eight into the stick there. And quickly out there was Ty Fox. Couldn't get a stick to it, but. Well, a good stick by Carter Moran defending that transition, deflected the pass, and uh, Owen Sounds back the other way on offense. That's Sean McMahon, who is an offensive player, so he's able to walk it in. Moran back to McMahon. McMahon now gets the screen. McMahon from a mile away, shot into the pads, and it skirts almost out of the orange paint, but a good job there by Fox to keep that one inside the orange restricted area. And now again, here come Guelph. That's Beecraft. Hands it off to Marcus Kelleher, and I expect I'll be saying his name all night tonight. Around one, what a move. In, shot over the net, it goes. What an opportunity there for Dallin Evans. Off the side, looking for it. Might have been Kelleher, but a shot, what a pass. And that one goes off the Dan Schneider banner, and it will go the other way. But what passing by the Regals that are unlucky not to capitalize. That was Dylan Davey, who was not able to capitalize on that pass. Yeah, that was a great skip pass down to the crease. And uh, Davey uh, one-timed it, but just couldn't find the mark. He missed the net, and it bounced out of bounds. So lucky there. They did a good job working the ball around. A nice move there, in shot low, and that one is swallowed up by Fox. That one was Sean McMahon with the opportunity, just was not able to beat the Regals goalie. And golf again, Kelleher. It goes down low. Looking for a shot, didn't have one, there was Boone. Now in the middle shot, that one I believe saved by Sanderson. Oh. Reset nevertheless, what a save by Nick Sanderson. Yeah. But Guelph still got a chance, that shot scores! And Guelph is able to capitalize anyway, and it looks like Charlie Boone's getting the credit for it, and that makes it two nothing Regals. Yeah, I mean, they got a lot of guys that can put the ball in that, so the... Defenders on Owen Sound are going to have their hands full tonight, but again, you can't allow a guy to come out from the corner one on two and beat two guys and get to the net and score. So they're going to have to do a much better job with their angles and, uh, you know, make things a little easier for their goaltender. Well, it's the fourth highest scoring team in the Western Conference, only behind 
Alora, Six Nations, who are first, of course, and then Cambridge, who have scored quite a few goals. They're right now second in league scoring as a team. So again, this Guelph offense is very high powered. But again, two of the highest scorers is Kelleher, and that shot off the shoulder there of Sanderson, but Guelph able to keep possession. Yeah, Up top. Guelph does a real good job moving the ball. And there that's Brett Vins with a third, and that makes it three nothing Regals early in this one, Steve. And something you and I were worried about was just how good this Regals offense is, and it has been lights out to start this one. Yeah, and it's been blustered too by the acquisition of Brett Vince coming over from the, the Pacers, and uh, he was their leading scorer. And uh, he'll certainly add another dimension to their offense here, which is uh, looking to be uh, clicking on all cylinders so far tonight. Possession will go the other way as Elliot Thompson got fouled there in the faceoff. It's now Calvin Stewart. Up top tier to Carter Moran. Moran for Arnold. Arnold looking for a pass, can't seem to find one. I did interview Curtis Arnold earlier tonight. You'll see that in between the second and third period. Coglin now. Gives it off there to Elliot Thompson. Thompson on offense. Thompson shot. That one saved by Ty Fox. And now Moran with the possession. Now we'll get the reset. Coglin. Moran. Gives it off to the top there. Almost was handled by, by Morrison, but he's fine. Morrison back for Curtis Arnold. Curtis Arnold. Gets around, Arnold, shot, saved by Fox, but he stepped in the restricted area nevertheless, so it wouldn't have counted anyway. As now Kelleher will slowly come up the floor. Yeah, again, Owen Sounds gonna have to uh, look, you know, look to work the ball, and get busy working off ball and get cutters inside. You know, again, they're not gonna win a game like this uh, playing on the perimeter, so uh, they can take a little page out of the book here of uh, Guelph and uh, see what it takes to Getting better scoring uh, positions on the floor. That was Zachary right there. Put that one well wide, and Fox got to fire it, and he does, but he fires it into the uh, score clock, so possession will stay pretty close to the Regals' net here as that ball bounces into the bench as Coughlin waits to receive. And Coughlin will now, and possession will start with Owen Sound here. Coughlin, Marig Mann, back to Joel Coughlin. Around the top it goes, Coughlin. Off there to the elbow, spin, looking for it in there, is Downs, that shot, that one just goes wide, but he had an opportunity there at the net to Tyson Downs, he just missed it. But now Downs again, from a mile away, fake the shot, and Downs in, shot, that's a save again, what a save, what a performance so far by Fox. Yeah, and two real good looks by Downs there. He uh, did a loses good, it. real good job getting inside. And now that's... Sabarin just could not get towards the net. He has to turn around and he'll lose possession of it, but Greg gain it instantaneously. And now the Regals, and again, that's Marcus Kelleher. Somebody lost their glove and it was Kelleher. Vince. Well, it looks like a penalty's coming Owen Sound's way. Kelleher, though, from a mile, that shot saved by Sanderson. Who's gonna get it? It's too many men on the floor for the No Stars. That's a costly bench minor for the home side, as we'll see who they send. It looks to be Owen Pryor going off for the two. Oh, never mind, it will not be Owen Pryor. It will be, it actually looks to be Noah Hepstock going off. So this Regal's power play is quite good so far this season as I do a quick little scan on my sheet produced by the great Mark Perry. And now I can't seem to find Guelph. Now I can, 34.4% for these Regals on the power play. And with the two top scorers, you gotta think it's gonna be pretty potent. Kelleher, off to the edge. He goes to the screen, back in the middle. Kelleher, what a save by Sanderson. They got a real ex well executed play there. They ran off first possession here, so let's see what they come up with next. Or Pannon for Kelleher. Right around the top it goes. They love this little move around the, the block to see who can get moving. Into the middle again, mishandled, but and he will step in, so possession will go the other way. I think lucky there for Marcus gardner Patak, who dropped him, and Gardner Peck catches it there, almost mishandled it, but possession will go the other way. Pryor now, quickly up. That'd be Curtis Arnold now. Arnold around, Arnold looking towards the net, won't go, and now he'll have a chance to choose some more clock here on the power play. But Car Arnold, though, tenacious, gets sent now. Is there gonna be a whistle? There is not. Arnold kept possession somehow as he went to the ground. Can Arnold regain it? Arnold can. 
Arnold gonna shoot. Arnold puts it one wide, but a penalty against the Regals. What a job by Curtis Arnold there, Steve. Yeah, I mean, he's like a dog on the bone when he gets that ball on his stick. He uh, can sometimes be a bit of a black hole and not move it, but in that situation, one on two killing a penalty, you can't fault him for that. And, uh, you know, his determination drew a penalty there, so they can go four up here and then a minute, minute into it, have a power play, so. Four on four, as you mentioned, the penalty will go to Kalen Brady. Pick there, Arnold shot, it goes high and wide. Oh, it sounds had some angles, Steve. They just haven't been able to capitalize, it feels like, as, Mer as Ma uh, McMahon, pardon me, to Moran. Moran's got 10 to work. Carter Moran gets the screen for McMahon up top, spin. Tyson Downs started to get a shot away. Well, Downs looked like he might have, but now he's gonna have to shoot it. He will, and it's saved, and but behind the legs there of Ty Fox, but he's able to re retrieve it, and lucky for him, that one didn't have a nasty spin on his team, but that could end it badly there for the Guelph goalie. Yeah, but that, that was a real good offensive set by 26 Tyson Downs. Uh, he uh, first threw a, a great pick to spring, uh, spring his teammate. Curtis Arnold to the net. Arnold probably would have been better to dish it back to, to Downs, who was wide open in front, but nonetheless, that's what they're gonna need to do is a lot of work off ball to, to uh, create opportunities, and that was one of them. The four of four is now done. Owen South on the power play for about a minute as Ryan Wilpley threw that ball, air milled it into the benches. Hempstock now can just come right into the offense. Hempstock immediately sucks the pit from Moran. Moran, that one goes wide. Owen South should have to dump it, and Coughlin touches it, so it will stay inside the regal zone, but they're gonna try to quickly attack this transition Owen Sound, but thank goodness they were able to get some guys on the floor fast enough that it will not affect them, but they should chew about 30 seconds off of the sh of the power play here, which will leave them with about 10 left in the man advantage here. We'll see if Guelph can get an opportunity at the net. As it is, Kellehern shoots it into the net there of Sanderson. Surprised he shot that so early, Steve. He still has about 10 seconds off from the shot clock. Yeah, you would think he would have wanted to put the rest to bed, but uh, let's we'll see if it comes back to haunt him. That of 10 left here on the power play. Moran off the top from McMahon. That shot, again, just missed a spot. Downs, back for Moran for McMahon. McMahon shot, saved there by Fox, but it was definitely darn close here as the Regals will now come, and the power play is over, so now back to even strength. Neither team can capitalize on their one-man advantage. But both both had about a minute on that man advantage, might I add. Kelleher now in shot through the legs. Will it go? No, it will not. What is out there by Sanderson? He realized he didn't have it and move his legs back just close enough to stop it. And now Hempstock. Noah Hempstock will hand it off the top to that Sean McMahon. The man there for downs. That's now Tyson Morrison. Back for Tyson Downs. McMahon now gonna take a run. McMahon through the middle, didn't see an angle. He's only got five to work in the middle. Cut shot, what a save! Ty Fox, my goodness, Joel Coughlin had a golden opportunity, but the ball is still loose. Can Owen Sound regain it? They can, McMahon's got it. And he gets it up to Joel Coughlin. Owen Sound now can still capitalize. And then Moran, McMahon, Tyson Downs, Joel Coughlin. Coughlin's got about 18 to work, up for McMahon. McMahon does a fake, spins, got Hempstock. Could not get it there to Hempstock, but retrieved though by Tyson Downs. Downs, Moran just couldn't get there, but Downs gonna be able to retrieve it again. Downs only got seven to work with, he's gonna shoot from a mile away. Downs trying to get up to his forehand. Downs, around one, trying to get the shot away. He does, saved there by Fox. Will he be able to retrieve it one more time? He does, my goodness! Oh, it sounds like another possession, he just throws it back to Calvin Stewart. Yeah, Tyson Downs has really come to play tonight. He was literally one on five there after his last second shot attempt and did a great job retrieving the loose ball and giving him another opportunity for possession here. Grant, trying to find an angle. Joel Coughlin, up top there for Curtis Arnold. Arnold with the screen from Morrison. Arnold, that shot tipped and wide. Can Coughlin get there? He's only got seconds to work, but he cannot, and that ball will stay now in the Owen Sound zone. But what a... Quad possession there for Owen Sound. You know, to retain that ball, but sadly, we're not able to capitalize on any one of their prime opportunities. No, but if they keep up that effort and keep you know, continue to get multiple opportunities, uh, a few of them will drop, and the great thing is, when you have the ball, you don't get scored on. 
especially against this high-powered Guelph offense, is now up the floor came Gavin Downs. Downs getting harassed. He's going to have to give it up here eventually. He does, or I thought he did at least, but he missed. So now Downs going to have to take a beating here and get around, and he will. So now Downs will be able to hand it off, you'd think, to McMahon, and he will. But now that's about only 10 left in the shot clock, so McMahon's got to work quick. McMahon for Joel Coglin. Coglin got eight to work. Coglin gets caught. Coglin shot spinning. It takes an awkward bounce, but saved by Fox. And Fox blocked. Kevin Rand pick it up. And Kevin Rand shot. Is it saved? It is. What a save by Fox. My goodness. Yeah, again, another good stick uh, to flecking a pass there. But unfortunately, they're just not being able to find in the back of the net yet. Ty Fox has been beyond amazing in this first period. He's a big reason why Owen Sanders not at least got one, if not tied this game already. That shot from a mile away, saved by Sanderson, retrieved though by the Regals. Vin, or Brett Vince around the top, but stolen! Here come Owen Sound! In shot, saved by Fox again. Calder Adams with the opportunity. Just could not cash it in. Yeah, they're getting outstanding goaltending here uh, early on for Guelph, and uh, if it wasn't the case, it would certainly be uh, probably all tied up at this point. At least you'd think. But now in, passed across. Keller, I believe that's Kellehern's shot. That one saved. Now retreat, pardon me, now it is Kellehern. Yeah, Owen Sound's gonna have to really pay close attention to their guys. They Again, somebody got loose, wide open there and uh, had a great A scoring chance. Davey wasn't able to get open on that one though, so only got it directed towards Sanderson, not a real shot at Sanderson, but now possession will go to Owen Sound. It's Calder Adams again, hands it off to McMahon. Sean McMahon, about five left to go here in this first frame, three nothing Guelph. McMahon was looking for a pass, never saw one. McMahon then will go, McMahon will go, shot, Fox again! And he'll give Fox a shot there by accident. As McMahon will take a couple of whacks. And Elliot Thompson comes in and says, no, 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 you get your hands off my forward. Yeah, good job by Thompson to step in there. And uh, Ken McMahon's been pretty aggressive getting to the net too. He bumped the goalie a little bit on his follow through. And uh, well, took a little exception to that, but. As expected, you'd think. Yeah, but all is good. Right now, trying to get through, but possession will go the other way. And flying there went a regal. A 27, I actually don't have on my sheet here, but in, shot, Coughlin, saved by Ty Fox. Yeah, that was another outstanding save on that transition breakaway. And now here comes Guelph quickly in, Kellehern, saved by Sanderson, saved again by Sanderson. The rollback was still stayed out, but again, Owen Sell coming in the other way. And that'd be Gardner Pataki ends it up there to Carter Moran. Moran. Off there to, that looked to be Tyson Downs. Now to Tyson Morrison. Morrison getting manhandled. Up for Downs. Downs, shot. Saved again by Fox. And now here come the Regals one more time. Quickly up the floor they come as well. That's Beecroft. Kyle Beecroft. There's a maybe a minor against Owen Sound. They're going back to the PK for the second time tonight. Yeah, and Guelph will get six guys out here for the delayed penalty. So uh, they'll have an opportunity to set something up. Boone, Kelleher, back to Kelleher. Kelleher, off there to Evans, back across, that shot goes wide, and I believe that shot was taken by Orpanen. And the minor will go to Owen Sound. Uh, trying to catch a number here. It looks to be Ethan Kerr number, oh, pardon me, it's Carter Moran number three, so not only is that a big loss for Owen Sound because they're down a guy, it's arguably their best player in Carter Moran. Yeah, and he's always a danger to score shorthanded when they put him up, uh, depending up on the top of the box on the man down situation. That ball just misses. Gardner Patak couldn't capitalize, but Orpanen gets a hold of it. Kelleher there for Evans. Back for Kelleher. Kelleher shot off the post. Had a spot, though. Orpana. Back for Kelleher, Kelleher, back for Orpana. Back for Kelleher. Evans, shot, or thought shot, pass, scored! What a pass! And that'd be Dylan Davey getting his first of the night, I believe, and it is, and it is now 4-0 Guelph. And again, another extremely well-executed play on the power play by Guelph. Uh, you know, to continue to swing the ball back and forth, the top man cut down the middle, drew some attention, and uh, 
I'm not exactly sure what Patak was looking at, but uh, he was certainly had the view of the pass the whole way, but wasn't able to step up and uh, cover his guy. And he had a wide open net, and Nick Patterson had to, uh, Sanderson had to uh, step up and uh, protect against the shot. Possession will go to the Regals, it looks like, but nobody can get possession of it. It's just mayhem down there at floor level, and the Regals will get away with it as there's some shots here as Calvin Stewart's getting a little bit of manhandle here as we lost the ball there for a second, but now the Regals again do have an opportunity. Oh, and sounds got to feel hard done by here, Steve, to have a goose to get on the scoreboard with about two left in this first frame. Yeah, they certainly have played pretty good the last 10 minutes, but uh, again, you can't give uh, this Guelph team opportunities. They're just too skilled, too much depth up front, and uh, they go there, out there with a plan every time they have a possession. Gardner Patak now trying to get away, and there goes the track star from OSDSS. As Gardner Patak hands that one off there to Carter Moran. Moran. Bounces it back for Joel Coglin. Off there for Curtis Arnold. Arnold around, trying to get a little bit of space. He can't find some, so he gives it up to Moran. Moran going to shoot from a mile away. He gets a little closer. That bounce shot right in between the legs of Fox, and again, Seemingly getting all the bounces is Ty Fox. Yeah, he's made a number of saves tonight where he wasn't even sure where the ball was, but it just goes to his positioning. And, uh, you know, he's uh, he's obviously stood tall in that uh, so far with the goose egg with uh, only a minute remaining in the first period. Or Panna tried to get through there, gets taken down oh. and lost possession. Yeah, pretty good coverage there. I wasn't sure if uh, the referee was going to call him for a little extra at the back end of the play, but uh, letting them play. Fake there by McMahon. Up there for Tyson Downs. He's got about 45 to work here, but 10 on the shot clock. What a pass. Moran scores! Car Carter Moran finally gets Owens out on the board. Yeah, and again, a great look by Tyson down. A little skip pass again from shooter spot all the way down to the crease. And Carrie Moran a little clutch and then let her go low. And, uh, you know, with Hemstock in front, creating a little bit of distraction. They, uh, they finally get one and, uh, you know, strong way to end the period. We'll see if that leads to something going into the second period to finally get through Fo uh, Ty Fox because he has been dominant here tonight with some stupendous saves. That ball back for Marcus Kelleher. Kelleher, that looks to be for Owen Orpana. Orpana, around the top he goes, Orpana. Trying to get the shot away, can't, so he's got to back up. Back across the top, Owen alone, shot saved by Sanderson. And oh, and so might get one more chance here if they can get it down quickly. I wonder if the time is going to be taken. It will not be so. Gardner Patak's got to go. Can Gardner get a shot away? Gardner's in alone. Gardner, shot! What a save by Fox, but the opportunity there for Owen Sound as Gardner Patak had a really good chance and a little bit of, little bit of something there at the end. We're going to see. Looks like the Guelph Regal's got a minor there at the end of the period. So that, again, might be advantageous for Owen Sound, Steve. But Fo uh, Ty Fox, I will say the hyphenated part of his name. I was told by the head coaches not just to call him Fox, but we'll go Fo Ty Fox Trudel, who's been fantastic, Steve, and he's a big reason why this game isn't at least tied right now. Yeah, again, you know, although uh, Guelph, you know, certainly shows some uh, high level of skill and, uh, and like I said, a good plan going out on O every time they have possession. Owen Sound did battle back and have a number of opportunities where they were uh, retrieved their own loose balls off shots and had the uh, second and third opportunity at the 32nd clock and they got to keep that up here in the second period and uh, kind of win the possession game if they want to you know chip away at this lead definitely got to finally find a way to break ty fox they did there at the end of the first we'll see if that finally kind of breaks the dam steve and finally lets them get a lot more offense they've had a lot of great opportunities but we're gonna have to go to break coming back you'll see myself interviewing marcus kelleher and leading point getter in all of the ola junior b division after that it'll be back to me and steve cutting up getting ready getting you ready for the second period here on rogers tv every year 
dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit StopTrackTragedies.ca. Lovely viewers, it's your host of On The Couch, Antoine El Hashim, reminding you to tune in for every episode of Season 9 of the longest running and most loved local queer talk show on Rogers TV. Check it out. intermission. I am Spencer Byers alongside Marcus Kellehern. Marcus, you are the leading point getter right now in the OLA Junior B Division. 104 points. What do you think the final goal is for you this season, point-wise? Uh, I'm aiming for 120 this year. It's all about the offense helping me out as well. Owner Panna, Dave, Dylan Davies, Dallin Evans just passing me the ball. Me passing them the ball, working on offense, getting some good looks. Well, I believe Ethan Kelleher, and I'll kind of say your brother, not sure if he's little or, little, little or older, but he also has quite a few points on this team. What is it like to play with a, a brother like that who also is getting the points? Well, we've been twins, so like we're twins, so our whole life we've played together, and it's always been back and forth battling who can get more points every year. Well, I think you got him beat this year, but now onto your team. You guys are currently fifth in the standings. You guys can climb, though. You're right there with St. Catharines and Windsor. What do you think the goal is for your team with the finish in the playoffs? Who would you like as a matchup? Uh, we're hoping to finish fourth, get that home floor advantage, and finish the year with playing at home. Would you like Windsor or St. Catharines? I know they're kind of in the mix there, too. At, at, you guys are at 24, they're at 26 and 27, respectively. Is there a team, a matchup you guys like a little bit more? Uh, it doesn't really matter to us. Any team will take on. I like the attitude. Now, again, your team coming into tonight, you only have one more game after this one. So you guys really need to make up the points if you want to catch a team like Windsor or St. Catharines. What do you think the key is tonight against Owen Sound? Work hard, pick up loose balls, and get some good shots on net. Now, you mentioned that your offense has been great this year. Again, you lead the OLA. Your teammate, oh, as you mentioned there, Oprana, actually happens to be top five as well. What has led to your two success so far this year? I don't, I mean, just working hard, pass each other the ball and get each other open. Uh, or Pan is aiming to get 100 tonight, so we'll see what happens. Well, he's got two games to do it, so you got to expect he'll be right there. He's right now has 94, but I'll end the, end the interview with this, Marcus. Final score of the night, Guelph, Owen Sound. Final score, who do you got? I don't know. We'll see, but hopefully Guelph on top. No, no score? No. You know what? I respect that. Anyway, Marcus Kellehern of the Guelph Regals, thank you so much for joining me. Come on back for getting you ready for the second period with myself and Steve McCarthy. Are you the type who would keep going or stop? It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca. I have a really big passion for dance. I get a little bit bullied at school, and I'm never gonna let anyone stop me. You made new friends with us right here. <laughs> I think that there are limitless possibilities to what we can achieve. Yeah! You are a star. Your life will never be the same. It was just breathtaking. It's the life of your dreams make it, real. it was John's graduation. We were so proud. We all got together for a picnic. That's when we heard <laughs> coming from the radio. So we stopped and we listened. It helped us get to safety. That's why when I think of I think of John. 
because now he has a real future to look forward to. But he's, uh, you know, taking up some space and a, just a perfect shot. And we got a tie ball game. It's nice low shot right around. Right around for Welcome back here to the Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center. 4-1 currently in favor of the away Guelph Regals over the Owens on North Stars. I'm Spencer Byers alongside Steve McCarthy. And Steve, I don't think we can talk enough about Ty Fox, how good he was in that first period. Again, he saved so many opportunities. And I don't mean like, oh, they were kind of. I mean, wide open shots, breakaways by Joel Coughlin, by Calder Adams. Yep. He was just amazing for yeah, he, uh, Yeah, he really stood up. Uh, Early in the game, it looked like it might be a runaway freight train for the offense on Guelph, as, as we've noted that they're loaded up front with the, even if guys don't have a ton of points to their credit, they all contribute, they all move the ball around, they're all a threat. But uh, he is, uh, second half that period, he really stole the show and kept this, uh, kept their lead intact with, with the three goal lead. Yeah, Guelph, as you mentioned, scored three goals in the first six minutes. You and I thought this might not exactly go the way we would have hoped for Owen Sound. But yeah. since that moment, basically since that third goal, Steve, they had multiple multi-possessions against Guelph, one including what they had four consecutive possessions, wasted about three minutes off the clock here. So they've shown against this Guelph team, who are currently fifth in the West, that they can play with these guys, even though the scoreboard may not necessarily tell that story. Yeah, again, they, they don't stack up uh, on a skill level and, uh, you know, they, they're not in the same game with respect to, you know, how they look at the game and how, they, how they're able to execute. But the grit and determination has really able, uh, leveled that playing field so far. So uh, if they can keep that up, you know, they should be good to stay in this game and uh, hope for a good outcome on, uh, you know, for their playoff uh, strategy. Now, lastly here, I think we got to mention Nick Sanderson. Yeah, and didn't have, again, great start letting the first shot of the game, which I think you mentioned is a problem for this junior B team. But in spite of that, he's been great. What do you think of his performance so far tonight? Again, like, uh, you know, he's let a couple long shots in the first one he'd probably like to have back. But again, the, the D has to step up, take those shooting lanes away. And, uh, you know, inside, he's been a power of strength all season long. And, uh, you know, he keeps giving them a chance to, to stay in games. And a great acquisition from those new market Saints down in the East Division. But that'll be it here for us. Come on back. Second period just about to start. Stay tuned for that here on Rogers TV. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to rogerstv.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. Ani, I'm Carolyn King, and I'm a member of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the creator of the Moccasin Identifier. Philip Cote, an artist in Toronto here, took and redrew uh, real moccasins. We're starting over with the children. The idea is that they would research whose land their school is built on, near, or what treaty area they're in. And the educational kit that we have has all that information in there. And the children just, like, I love it. My dream is that this province will be covered with moccasin identifiers within the next decade, and they will forever know whose land they're on. That's the goal. Educate and awareness with a nice, simple little program called the Moccasin Identifier. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks, and it shattered her world. <laughs> back as we are back here at the Bay Shore Community Center. Spencer Byers alongside Steve McCarthy. Face off one though by the Guelph Regals but given immediately away you'd think. Can Owen Sound retrieve it here on the man advantage. There was a minor right at the end of the period against star player Marcus Kelleher for the Guelph Regals. 
And Owens Allen having trouble retrieving the ball here, and they don't have it, so now Guelph can chew more time off of this power play. Owen Sound already 0 for 1 on the power play, but it was only about a minute as it started off as 4 on 4. Stolen though, and that gets who? It's Brady Kruger. Kruger in, shot, saved by Fox. Ty Fox again with a big save and a breakaway. Possession the other way. Braden Kruger scored a couple of those not too long ago, I believe actually against the Cambridge Highlanders earlier this season here at home. So he is dangerous in those breakaway situations, just wasn't able to capitalize against his hot goalie in Ty Fox. Pass down, mishandled. They're gonna have to shoot, you'd think, and stolen again, but this time was not able to get away. There looked to be Gavin Downs, who will have to hand it off here to Carter Moran. This will be the first offensive possession for Owens out on this man advantage. Yeah, it's probably gonna be the only one they get, so they uh, hopefully will uh, have something up their sleeve here to, to uh, create a goal scoring opportunity. Tyson Downs for McMahon, for Moran. How do you back up to McMahon, you think? Yes, he does. Sean McMahon shot, saved by Fox and luckily caught that one in his armpit. So now possession will go to Guelph and they will be able to chew up the rest of this man disadvantage for Guelph. But the ball popped out. Can Owen Sound retrieve it? They might be able to, they are. Downs in, shot saved. Oh my goodness. Fox has been beyond amazing for this Guelph team. Yeah, he's been sound positionally, but uh, he's uh, shown great reflexes when he's. Uh, might have bitten on a fake. He's able to recover and get back into a position to make the save. So uh, he, again, continues with his outstanding evening. Kelleher tried to capitalize right off of the penalty, but just could not catch his pass here. As now Owen Sound will have a chance. Arnold, who you'll get a chance to see myself interviewing in between the second and third. Moran to McMahon. McMahon around the top. McMahon takes a bump. McMahon pack in front. Mc, uh, Moran shot. Scores! Carter Moran! And it went down her back. A little bit closer. That's his second of the night and 42nd of the year, might I add, for number three, Carter Moran. Again, a good look from Sean McMahon, who uh, dished the ball off from his offside. And uh, Carter Moran went to the underhand once again and uh, was able to squeeze it in there. So. Uh, Good start, the first two and a half minutes of this period to, to uh, cut the lead to 4-2. Fox just not able to get enough on that one. Face off by Alation against Owen Sounds. The possession will go to the Regals. And they'll get, their first, they'll get their first real chance on the offense without a penalty against. That pass, nobody home there. Or Panda had an opportunity to get to Kelleher. And Kelleher, an open shot, saved by Sanderson. And that is the last guy you want wide open in the middle, Steve, but a great save by Sanders and bails on his defense. Again, we had two Owen Sound players chasing one. You gotta you know, know who you got, and you certainly don't want to leave the league's leading score on the doorstep unattended. So uh, again, they're gonna have to improve their communication and uh, be aware of who's out there when they're there. McMahon shot again, saved there by Fox Trudel. I'm gonna have to ask Daryl for his thesaurus down there in the uh, in the control room. Because my goodness, has Trudeau been absolutely amazing? The Regals again now on offense. Orpana, Kelleher. Round it goes for Orpana again. That one from a mile away, and that one right into the net there of Sanderson. And he'll just give it up close. That's to Downs. And that's Tyson Downs. Coughlin. Yeah, a Morang. This is pick from Hemstock. McMahon, or Moran, pardon me, back up there for Joel Coughlin. He's got five to work now. Coughlin gonna have to shoot that shot right into the net there of Ty Fox, who will fire it up. Man, I couldn't retrieve it. But it is caught there by W. Trent Gilbert, who will give it up again to Owen Orpana. Orpana. For Boone, for I believe that would be, I was gonna say Kelleher, but he's not. He's at the top. Back up top, though, by the Regals. Now Orpana again. 
Kelleher's gonna go off, or Pana right into the net there, and another good defensive possession there for Owen Sound. That's the second straight shot clock borderline violation where the shot comes from about 50 feet or more. Morrison. Tyson Morrison. Around the top it goes, Moran. Back there for Elliot Thompson. Morrison, back up for Thompson. Moran for Morrison. Tyson Morrison around, scores! Tyson Morrison, they're within one. We wondered, Steve, if the first goal at the end of that first period would finally open the floodgates, and I think we can finally say it has for Owen Sound. It may not be flooding yet, but it's more than a trickle. And again, that was a, a real nice uh, set by the Owen Sound on the offense. They swung the ball, kept moving it to the strong side where the lefties are, eventually got it over to the weak side where it was just a lot more room on the floor and uh, an excellent move and a nice shot under the glove resulted in a goal. Possession one again though by the Regals. Yeah, Sam McDonald has absolutely dominated this faceoff dot tonight. He's had one every draw to this point, I believe, and uh, you know that's something that they're going to want to address. Kelleher or Pana or Pana trying to get around, looking for Boone, doesn't get it there. Around that he'll go. Kelleher got dropped. Though in front, that shot, that one goes wide. Retrieved though behind the back shot, that one goes wide, and the shot clock will go as those are two straight opportunities there, and that looked to be for Brett Vince, who just could not get anything towards the net. But now Owen Sound again with possession. Arnold. For Moran. There for Downs. Downs there, back for Arnold. Arnold trying to make a scoop towards the net. Can't get around, so he's gonna have to go all the way around. That shot goes wide, and the shot clock's gonna go regardless of Fox Trotel, who will retrieve it. And up for Sabarin. There for Dil uh, Dylan Davey. Davey hands it off. There to Locke. Locke. Off the top there for Kelleher. Another minor here against Owen Sound. So here's a chance for the Regals. That pass across just couldn't get it there. As another backdoor pass just could not capitalize for the Regals. That might have been the fifth goal for Wealth. But now going to the box for Owen Sound. Looks to be Calvin Stewart, who has been, I think I can say, outright manhandling leading point getter and goal scorer Marcus Kelleher in front of the net. Well, this will be a big uh, big power play either way. Either to restore that two-goal lead or get Owen Sound uh, even more momentum here as they fight back to tie this game up. Kelleher, they scored in their most recent power play, did the Regals, but they did miss on their first opportunity, which did become a four-on-four -four after about a minute. Warpana, across the top. That shot from a mile away, saved there by Sanderson, goes into the corner. Can Owen Sound retrieve it? Gardner Patak fighting for it. Two on right now, run right now in favor of the away side. Ball popped up though. Can Owen Sound retrieve it deep in their zone still? They will as Pryor gets it and will just fire it. And Moran catches it. What a catch by Carter Moran deep in the regal zone. Moran's gonna get around. Moran, shot. Great save by Fox Trudel, my goodness. And now here come Owen, and here come Guelph. You'd think, but Owen's not able to get back is a little cut, a catch there, and it might have caught him in the cup area, and it did there for poor Byzantine. <laughs> As Kelleher, Orpana, Kelleher, down low, back for Orpana. Across the top, Kelleher again, back pass again. Right now, Orpana, Orpana, trying to get a shot away, can't, has to shoot it, it goes wide, shot clock's gonna go. And it does, and Owen Sound has been stellar on defense start this quarter, but quickly up for Sean McMahon. McMahon tried to capitalize there, and the referee just passed him the ball there. I'm not sure Guelph would have been happy with that, but regardless, they do force McMahon away, and now they're going to try to force him before he chews up about 15 more seconds of this man advantage, which will leave them about 10 on the power play. McMahon, just, just, just happy taking off time with this power play. McMahon. Trying to get around one. Gets a good, takes a good shot. Ball pops out though. And now possession will go to Guelph. Trent Gilbert. 
And about four to work before the power play is over. Calvert Stewart's gonna come out now. So now it's back to five on five, and Stewart is a defender. That shot saved by Sanders, they don't keep it in the orange paint. And he'll hand it off. Braden Kruger, I haven't seen a whole lot of the night Braden Kruger the captain, but he's one of the main defenders on this team. That ball airmailed over Curtis Arnold, however, and that ball is gonna bounce around. Can Arnold get retrieved? Arnold cannot, but Moran joins in, and we'll see who comes out, out of it, out of this pile here. That ball popped up and thrown back. Retrieved by Pryor, who's gonna fire from a mile away, bounces off the corner, and will be retrieved there by the Regals as caught by Sanderson is gonna hand to the referee. And they're gonna put it back in the, just inside the Owen Sound zone here. Orpana, across the top it goes. Looking for Opana, that one goes wide. Sanderson went to play it, but the ball died there in the corner. Chopped back into that corner and now picked up by Owen Sound, and here they come. And that ball popped out of Calder Adams' stick, but goes right to Carter Moran, which I think is just about the best player it could have went to. Tyson Downs, got about 15 to work here. Across the top shot, that one saved it into the rafters, and possession will go the other way as McMahon thought he could beat Fox from that far out, and I'm not sure I agree with him. Yeah, he kind of pounded that bounce shot into the pavement and it found its way over the glass. Around the top and tried to set a pick there, but straight through went Owen Sound, but they might get an, an opportunity to the Regals. They did not, or Panna. Around the top, through the middle now, that shot goes wide. Or Panna might be able to retrieve it. He could not, and now picked up by Owen Sound, but lost the possession immediately, but right back to Owen Sound. You thought! Man, trust it was Travis Morrison, so the Regals regain possession. Not exactly a advantageous miscue there for Owen Sound. That ball popped up again. They might be able to get it one more time. Morrison, they'll miss it again. That ball must pop out, and Sanderson will retrieve it. Thank goodness Nick just said, okay, enough of that. My ball. Yeah, I'm not sure that really that warranted a reset there. Trent Beasel. Had... Oh, here we go. Be a fight right in front of the bench. I think you and I missed it there, Steve. We're gonna see what happens here. Is now there's a fight again in front of the Owen Sound bench as they're trying to keep guys out of this particular fr uh, fracas, if you will. As oh, there are some punches thrown here between these two sides, and they're still talking. And that's Ethan Kerr, and it looks to be Ryan Welpley as they're both getting set. And Welpley really wants some. Welpley still barking at Kerr as they're both going off. And hopefully Mark Perry got that on replay because I completely missed that until they were both on the ground ski. Yeah, they, uh, I saw that happening and I was more interested. It looked like uh, might have been Trent Beasel that jumped into the fray. Not sure uh, whether the referees will exercise the altercation in the change box rule, which will be an automatic expulsion for both players, or whether they, uh, there. And you see there, Welpley threw Kerr into the bench. Obviously, yeah. Kerr did not get kicked too kindly to that, so he started fighting back, and then all of a sudden, you see there, came in Beasel. But you gotta wonder what, I guess, Kerr might have said, because Welpley was very upset with whatever happened before Welpley decided to put him into his own bench. Yeah, again, it's, uh, they are both willing combatants. However, the initial altercation was from a, a hit from behind into the open door, so that, that should be... Uh, you know, altercation in the change box, or whatever the correct terminology may be, but uh, that's generally a game misconduct right there, whether they hand it both ways or not. I guess we'll see. Well, Curve right now got a two minute minor. We're quickly gonna thank Pizza Hut for tonight's crew refreshments. You can visit them at 669 10th Street West here in Owen Sound. Call them at 519 371 5660 or visit their website at www.pizzahut.com or .ca, pardon me. They can help them because they help us. And I had at least five or six pieces of pepperoni pizza. I'll be taking the rest of it home. No, John, you can't have that box. You can have the other box. Downstairs is, of course, John. And if somehow, I got to be honest here, Steve, I'm confused. The only minors going to Ethan Kerr. Uh, yeah, they each got five minutes and Kerr got the extra two. So again, <laughs> uh, either the referees totally missed it looks like they miss, and that's what the Beasel is, in, is uh, asking the referee 
Yeah, Beasel and Crawford. Yeah. Uh, but that was, an, uh, and again, an altercation, which it might have started off outside of the change box, but it was certainly uh, huh. brought into and, uh, you know, a dangerous play anytime you run someone from behind when the gate is open, uh, you know, so it doesn't have to be a hard hit to create a little injury. So I'd be a little bit perplexed if I was the only sound coaching staff with this, and the result you, of this call as well. And you can tell Coach Cochran's not happy here about what has transpired. I don't blame him because even if you wanted to say Beasel gets a minor for coming in after, you still think that Welpley would be getting the extra minor here from Welf because again, he did throw Kerr right into the bench. And it looks like Hempstock is going off, or pardon me, is that Pryor, is that Hempstock? It is Noah Hempstock going off of the extra minor here. So again, I'd love to hear what poor Kerr said is he is not happy, I assume as well with this extra yeah. minor going against <laughs> the Guelph Regals are going against himself, pardon me, going in favor of the Guelph Eagles, but this might really stop this North Star momentum that was really swinging in their favor in this period, Steve, if they have the extra time here, and it's, as you hear from Wallace, the stoppage. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that there's any further explanation. Well, I'm sure it's questioning why there wasn't a third man in or an extra minor, but they should walk out of this happy to come out on the power play. Kelleher, right across, Warpana. Kellehern, or Panna, right across the top, back for Kellehern, back pass again, or Panna for Kellehern, taken away, can, can the captain get it? Yes, he can, there goes Kruger, Kruger, can take a bump, can Kruger get around? Yes, he can, Breed Kruger, turn on the Jets, Kruger, saved by, Tru by Fox Trudel. He is lightning quick when that ball touches his 60. My goodness, I did not realize how fast he was. Yeah, he uh, certainly showed a great burst of speed to create a scoring opportunity that didn't look like it was there when he first uh, retrieved the loose ball. Kelleher, Arpana, cross top again. Kelleher, shot right into the chest there of Sanderson, it will swallow it up. Yeah, I think the Guelph power play has gotten the uh, He's uh, stopped showing some of the creativity they had early on in the first period there, and uh, whether they're pressing a little bit or not, uh, they certainly haven't shown the poise and the, again, the execution, which they did in the first couple opportunities. And not even scored necessarily, but just had some plays that were working, just could not capitalize to that last finish, if you will, but Owen Sound, yeah. again, just glad to kill this time as Gardner Pertalk gets around, Gardner Pertalk gets the minor as well, that's his second straight drawn minor, I believe. For Gardner Patak in the offensive end. Yeah, that's uh at least second for Owen Sound for sure, Steve, as now Owen Sound will again send it to four on four, just like it did for the first minor they took of the game. Yeah, that was again a great individual effort, just wanting to get to the net. Uh, you know, Carter Patak doesn't necessarily have the greatest set of hands, and uh, but he was determined to beat his man and uh, had the grab and clutch, and uh, now we're looking at a four on four situation. And away went Parker Locke and that will basically kill the rest of this four on four. Is this one shot as Moran shoots it and Fox just got a hold of that one. Try to beat him against the post, but quickly do come Guelph you'd thought, but the ball goes well wide. Will it be retrieved there by Owen Sound? It will not, so a chance here for the Regals. Yeah, Travis Morrison's really got to, he, he needed to get busy and get to that ball first. He sort of didn't realize there was a guy coming from the backside that just came in from behind and scooped that ball. So. And now a time, we're gonna figure something out here. Yeah. And they're gonna actually have to send back the Guelph player here because two players came out because of the offsetting minor, Steve. But the problem is, is if both guys come out, then Guelph thinks they can have a fifth guy on the floor, which obviously they can't down, down a man. Yeah, the initial Guelph guy was serving a five. He, he released himself when he saw the minor that Owen Sound was, uh, uh, had gotten on that play. So it's more of a miscommunication perhaps with the timekeeper. Uh, generally, they don't man both doors and leave it up to the players, but uh, they'll send him back to send, sit out the duration of his uh, now, five minutes. But now, Steve, you gotta wonder, as Braden Kruger came over, you gotta wonder, is this an extra minor against Wolf for me delay a game of some kind? No, nah, they'll, they'll, they'll let it be generally with uh, the timekeeper. I don't think you'll see them get uh, Penalized, but uh, again, we will find out. But again, possession was with Guelph, so could that change as well? And there is going to be an extra minor. 
against the Guelph Regal. So I thought when the referees kind of converged, Steve, that maybe that would be the outcome. So that was a five on three for Owen Sound. So we thought about with that extra minor for Guelph work in their favor, it seemingly has gone the other way. Yes, if anything, <laughs> hard to believe that you could uh, create this kind of chaos coming off a of power play, but. The, on a power play, Steve, that yep. first minor happened while they were on the man advantage. Yep, yep. And again, just uh, on pure determination on the Owen Sound's behalf, on Grandier Patak, and uh, you know, his hustle created the situation, and now Guelph finds himself down too with the too many men. Yeah, Welpley gets the extra minor credited to him. Not sure it was Welpley, because I think he knew it was going to be a five, but I guess maybe it was him who came out of the box early. As now Kruger will man the very top as it's a four on three for Owen Sound well, with the fifth guy up top, just waiting just in case the ball skips by. Downs. McMahon, what a pass. Moran just could not catch that one, but picked back up. McMahon, Douglas, what a save! Fox Trudel! They still got a minute though on the, th 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 the four on three with the fifth guy at the edge. Downs, Moran stopped it. Can he get ret retrieve it? He could not, and the ball will go the other way. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Again, just hurrying the pass. You got a five on three situation, four on three deep in their zone, and here that they've ball. almost given yeah. up a breakaway. Ooh, uh, yeah, they almost did a couple times there as Anderson will give it up there to, to Downs. Downs got to work quick here. Well, actually, pardon me, no, he doesn't. He's got 20 on the shot clock and about 30 on the man advantage. McMahon, Moran, shot, that one goes wide. Missed there by McMahon, but again, that's why Kruger, who mishandles it himself, is up top. Yeah, so it's... Downs. Down low, Arnold's shot saved. McMahon, they only got six to work now though. Moran shot save. Arnold can't retrieve it. Trudel does, and the guy coming out of the box might be able to get a hold of this. He hooked it, and it will be missed, and retrieved by Owen Sound. So now again, it's a five on four now. Stevens takes that one away. Shot, Moran blocked. Ball popped out though. Owen Sound tried to get back possession. Picked up now by down, or by, by Arnold, pardon me. Arnold, McMahon, Moran, McMahon, Tyson Downs. I have to give it back to Sean. Nope, up for Carter Moran, that shot saved by Trudel. Caught though by Downs. Up top again for Moran, down low, read it in the middle. McMahon has to give it away, Moran, shot saved, and picked back up by Downs. Downs, in, shot, save, again, save, Trudel, my goodness. But possession stays with Owen down. that's Tom, uh, Thompson. Thompson spinning, Thompson shooting, Thompson missing just by a little bit. And back up by Downs. What possession by Owen Sound, even on the power play. Shot, oh, airmailed over Arnold. Downs though tried to retrieve it. There's gonna be another minor against 12. Yeah. That's gonna be a cross check yeah. and talk about floor tilt, Steve. My goodness, Owen Sound has been dominating since they took since that extra minor fell the other way. Yeah, they just now got to capitalize on these man up opportunities. As you know, the next one is uh, likely coming their way. So, uh, you know, they've got to find a way to solve this goal. He'd be a little more patient. He tends to lunge out at the shooters a little bit if they can hang on and uh, just let him make the move. Uh, that should create a better angle for the shooters, but uh, take nothing away from him. He is, uh, Ty Fox Crudell has been outstanding. And, uh, you know, Nick Sanderson hasn't had a lot to do this period. And, of course, he's always stepped up and makes the big big saves when uh, when called upon. So, you know, this game is playing in the Owen Sound's hands, keeping a low score. And, uh, you know, but they do need to capitalize on these power play opportunities. As you, as you see there, a little water break. We're going to take a look at the scoring leaders. And I keep mentioning it. There is Marcus Kelleher, number one. You see they are technically tied for that be third spot is Owen Orpana. No Owen Sound, North Stars in the top 10 as you see there. The top point getter and goal scorer for this North Stars team is Carter Moran, 40 goals and 69 points. So he's not too far off of that leaderboard. No, he's uh, inching his way up. And again, they're going to need some more contributions from some other guys here. Car Carter has two of the three already tonight. Sean McMahon for Tyson down. Scores! Downs! We're tied! Again, much better ball movement again, even though the shots are coming from the perimeter. Anytime you have the goalie shuffling his feet and you know he loses a bit of 
uh, where he might be in the net, and that one just seemed to go through him, which is one of the first times that's happened tonight because he's, uh, again, anything that's kind of touched his body is, is stayed out of the net. Went short side, and welcome went off the pad there of Fox, and now Thompson again in the faceoff circle, loose again, but possession will go to Owen Sound, and Kruger, there's lightning in a bottle. Kruger gets taken down, and possession will go the other way. Yeah, great defensive effort to knock Kruger to the ground and take over possession. So they really want to clamp down here. And while still on the man up, they don't want to give up uh, a goal to go off here to kind of stifle any kind of uh, uh, momentum they've created. That shot from a mile away. Picked up though by the Regals across. Nobody home and possession will go the other way as that ball miss Anderson. Owen Sound's defense has really shored itself up since the first period. Just about the first six minutes, Steve. Yeah, and it's, uh, yeah, Guelph hasn't had, you know, a lot of penalties have played a part here, but they uh, they seem to be able to play the two-man game, a lot of ball movement, uh, had the Owen Sound's defense off, off kilter, but uh, that shot by things, Downs. things have changed, certainly. Down saved there by Fox. And we'll just get that one away. Hempstock. Off there, too, that looks to be Carter Moran. Up for Sean McMahon. McMahon will switch spots with Moran. He'll take a bump, get around, trying to find Cogling. Cogling gets thrown down, but possession will stay with Owen Sound. Downs now, looking for a pass. Can't seemingly find one. He's going to try to turn around, though. Downs, shot! Reset, and I thought he touched in. He didn't, so Cogling's able to retrieve. And now Joel Cogling. The second leading point getter on this North Star squad is Joel Coughlin, right now at 33. Downs, spinning, Downs, in, saved again by Fox, and will Downs be able to retrieve the loose ball? He will not, so possession will go the other way in favor of Guelph, but again, Owen Sound having multiple opportunities at Fox, they just can't seem to beat him, consistently at least. Yeah, again, Downs creating another scoring opportunity Cutting hard to net across the crease, and he kind of trying to went to go back against the grain, and uh, he might have been better suited. He had the goalie dragging, and uh, he had more net probably short side, but uh, tried to go back far side. And Kelleher put that one off the goalie into the stands as Fox is going to have to chase that one as Pryor goes to drop the goalie, and Pryor's going to get messed up now, and there's going to be a fight here as Pryor. He's got to get a hold of a second freakish has broken out. And you knew, and Steve, I'll be honest, you saw Pryor from a mile away getting ready to drill poor Ty Fox. Yeah. Again, you, you don't see a lot of goaltenders leave the crease anymore to play the ball, even though they've got more padding on than the rest of the team combined. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, you can see him coming. He certainly didn't go high. He just, you know, it's a good body check. The goaltender had turned his back to him. But well, again, I think he knew it was coming. Yeah, he might have been better to get his big Woody up there and uh, protect himself with a little follow through more so than turning his back where he has no protection. But uh, nonetheless, you could, uh, you could certainly anticipate a response from the Guelph uh, defender. And uh, I'm sure this would be, uh, Two minutes apiece and uh, call it a day. Oh, I would be worried if I was a North Star just in case these referees decide to take something into their own hands and give poor Pryor a little bit extra there for the for the hit on Ty Fox. But we'll yeah, see. although I mean it's not a penalty to hit hit the goaltender, unlike in hockey where they you know desperately try to protect goaltenders, it's not a penalty. So uh, you know he didn't do anything illegal other than to get jumped unless they're going to call a checking from behind but that was only because the goaltender turned and exposed his back so um, you know not exactly sure what the call is here and uh, well who's gonna look like get the extra juice so um, probably the right call at the end of the day as down went it looks to be Dallin Evans for 12 as again prior will go for Owen for go for Owen sound so now 204 left on the clock in the second period Two minutes on the main advantage. Owen Sound can basically use the rest of this time on the clock in this period for this power play, just about. So you gotta wonder maybe if the goalie gets pulled later in this opportunity passed across the top. McMahon 
Downs, Moran, shot, just missed, but picked up by Downs. Downs shot, didn't see Trudel, did not see that Fox was completely in the wrong spot. As possession will go, go to Guelph, and, and they're gonna go the other way, but a miscommunication there between referees will freeze a Guelph transition opportunity. And now Kyle Beecroft will just chew up about 30 seconds of this man advantage. And I do see Braden Kruger out there, so we'll see if Lightning in a Bottle can get away again. Around the top they go. That looks to be Kellehern. Kellehern fighting through. Kellehern saved by Sanderson. Sad he needed to do that. His possession again with the Regals. Again, just Marcus Kellehern so dangerous at any point. But they'll be able to chew another 30 off this man advantage. B. Croft. Yeah, the, Beecroft. Yeah, we've got uh, the four on five situation here with Owen Sound player serving a major penalty along with the Guelph player for their altercation after the goalie hit. So uh, we're going to have a timeout here by Owen Sound with 39 seconds to go and 36 on the power play. And you got to, and I wonder, Steve, if that means they will pull the goalie. I would expect that is what they're going to do. Well, uh, you know what? They're already uh, up a man. Uh, and again, because the 30 second clock is not in line with the uh, game clock, there'll be 10, almost a 10 second delay. I doubt they'll, they'll see the need to bring the goaltender out. They have that one man advantage, but they, uh, they, we, Certainly going to have a play drawn up here, and let's, uh, you know, for their sake, if they can execute it, they could, uh, you know, reward themselves with a well played second period and position themselves uh, well going into the third period if they could uh, get up a goal. So, uh, yeah, this is a crucial uh, 39 seconds. Well, not, not only well played second period, Steve, I'd say arguably the, the best outcome they could have hoped for. Yeah. Without, without being outlandishly optimistic, I think this could be arguably the best outcome they could have came up with coming into the second period down 4-1. Well, yeah, because they've certainly uh, got Guelph out of their uh, offensive mojo. Again, six minutes in, it was 3 nothing. We, you know, again, thought, uh-oh, you know, they're in. This is not the kind of wide-open affair they want to be involved with. And uh, Since that moment. Yep, so they uh, certainly... Um, Certainly have uh, done a good job, especially in the ball possession area. They probably had a better uh, better opportunity with the clock uh, than Guelph has, which is certainly uh, out of character. Moran, Downs, back for Moran. Downs and Moran just playing a little pass there. Downs, trying to get it back to Moran. Ball bounces around, can McMahon retrieve? McMahon can. Man, he's got to move it though. Moran now with the four shot. Yes, shot, save, shot, scores! Elliot Thompson! 5 4 0 oh, Sound! Only his sixth goal of the season, and Owen oh, Sound, after being down 4 1 coming into this period, are now up 5 4 with, a, with their first power play marker of the game. Yeah, just real Johnny on the spot there off the broken play. He picked up Carter Moran's rebound and uh, showed a lot of poise and confidence and took his time and made Tr Trudell, uh, Fox Trudell dance a little bit and he made sure he put it in the wide open net. That ball got thrown into the Guelph bench. Owen oh, will gain possession. Kruger picks it up. Kruger's got to go. It's quickly up. Downs, shot. Why goes Gavin Downs and that will be the period, but Again, Steve, I don't think this period could have gone any better for the home side. They come in down 4-1. They come out up now 5-4. That means they scored four goals in this period to none for the high-powered Guelph Regals. And if Owen Sound can keep up this defensive performance, this is exactly the type of game they need against a team like Guelph. And yeah. again, they are almost, they are guaranteed to play one of Alora or Six Nations most likely. So a game like this is a perfect pre uh, preemptive to that end goal. Yeah, it certainly is because, uh, you know, they have, I think, London up on the docket next, and that's a team that, again, has struggled. And Owen Sound has beaten London earlier in the season, so if they could uh, ever come out victorious tonight, uh, get the next game, then they'd be well positioned going into game 20 of the season to uh, 
have a little easier uh, time with respect to uh, who they may face in the playoffs. Although <laughs> any of the top six teams really in this division are uh, are outstanding. So I don't think there's any nights off with respect to uh, who they may face first round. Yes, they also have St. Catharines to end the season who are also again in that mix of the top five teams in this Western Conference. But we'll be right back with more here in the second intermission. You're going to see myself interviewing Curtis Arnold of the Owen Sound North Stars and then back to myself and Steve McCarthy to break down going into the third and potentially final period between the Owen Sound North Stars and the Guelph Regals. Stay tuned on Rogers TV. Don't forget to tune in to Gray County Life on Rogers TV next week. We'll be hearing all about the 50th celebrations at Haibu. Let's go! I literally saved the world. Thank you, Spider-Man. You're an Avenger. Have I killed you before, Batman? He's a monster who thinks he's a god. Everything you call a life, I will burn out of time. Oh, we're all gonna die. Do you have something to share? Let everyone know about your next meeting, your need for volunteers, or your fundraising event on the Rogers TV Community Billboard. Send us your words and we'll bring them to life on Rogers TV and RogersTV.com. When it's time to spread the word, go to RogersTV.com to add your announcement to the community billboard. to the Harry Lonely Bayshore Community Center between the first or second and third period, pardon me, I'm with Curtis Arnold of the Owen Sound North Stars. Curtis, you're right now our top five in scoring on your team. What has led to your success so far this season? Just shooting the ball and getting to the net. Yeah. Now, your team is currently tied for eighth with Cambridge. You guys right now have quite a few teams you guys could play against coming into the playoffs, most notably Six Nations and Alora. Is there any team you guys are looking at right now, like maybe more of a, an easier matchup for you guys? I think we want Alora first round. I think we can beat them. You really like you really like the Mohawks? Yeah, we like the Mohawks. You know what, and I don't blame you because that undefeated Six Nations team looks a little bit dangerous on paper. But going into, again, your season, you guys are right now 8-9. You still got three games left, now two after this one. Do you got, how many wins do you guys think you guys can get? Obviously, you guys want three, but Guelph's a tough team. St. Catharines is a tough team. What do you guys think is the goal for the next three games? I think definitely tonight get the win here and then get the win Saturday against London. And then just get two this weekend. Two big wins this weekend? Yeah. Now, again, coming into tonight, what would you say is the one key for you guys tonight against this Guelph Eagles team? Uh, winning face-offs against this team. To get the ball right away would help, yeah. Well, I mean, they have do have leading score in all of the OLA and Marcus Kelleher. What do you think you guys need to do defensively to be, be able to stop a guy like that? Just stay on him, shut him down. Just get in the lanes? Yeah. And then I'll ask you my last question here, Curtis. Final score tonight, Regals, Owen Sound, final score, who do you got? 11-8 us. 11-8 Owen Sound, like the confidence, Curtis Arnold of the Owen Sound, North Star, stay tuned to be myself and Steve, breaking it down, going into the third period. But he's, uh, you know, taking up some space, and a, just a perfect shot. And we got a tie ball game. It's nice low shot, right around. Right around for Welcome to the traditional, ancestral, unceded territory of the Stalo people. The Stalo are people of the river. I am so thankful for the courage and resiliency of our ancestors who lived on this land since time immemorial. Each of us have gifts from the Creator, 
and our Creator has a plan and purpose to be fulfilled in our territory. As we embrace our traditional teachings, we can lead the next generation into the fullness of what our Creator designed. Our shared history reveals a broken relationship, but as all Canadians commit to hear truth, acknowledge injustice, we can learn to walk in our traditional way, let's not, with a good heart and a good mind. Then all of our lives will be enriched. Kwasai. Bayshore Community Center now 5-4 in favor of the Owen Sound North Stars over the Guelph Regals. I'm Spencer Byers alongside Steve McCarthy and Steve. Big period for Owen Sound. Again, coming in down 4-1, now up 5-4 going into the third period. Just what a great period for Owen Sound. Yeah, everything that could go right did go right, and, and they earned most of it. You know, they worked hard, they really clamped down on defense, they did a great job on the penalty kill. And uh, they finally got rewarded a little bit on the power play too, so uh, which is crucial because they kept getting the opportunities and they squandered a few. But to come out on a, on top, going into the third period, should uh, bode well for them. They just have to remember what got them there. It's been hard work and uh, and taking advantage of situations. Hard work and defense, I'd say, Steve. Their defensively has been fantastic. And we talked about they went down three one about six or about three nothing about six minutes into the first period. Since that moment, so about 34 minutes later, they've allowed one more goal. So they have been stellar in their own. Oh, and what do you believe that's been led by? Well, again, the, their attention to detail has been uh, much better. They've been uh, really good on loose balls. A number of games this year, we've we've remarked how. They would give opportunities, uh, second, third, fourth time opportunities on the defense, not retrieving rebounds, not boxing out. Tonight it's been a different story. Because uh, Guelph is, uh, they're a real sound offensive team. They all contribute. They got a couple big gunners, but uh, they're all very capable. And they've, they've done a, a much better job. They haven't totally shut them down. I mean, they've had to rely on their goaltender to make some big saves. But uh, you know, overall, they've played a really good game at both ends of the floor. Yeah, and I think that, that first six-minute span, they did have quite a few opportunities, second and third chances, which is what they capitalized on. And even on the power play, they didn't look as dangerous throughout this game as the power plays have gotten more. They went from scoring on the first one, or uh, scoring on the second one after the first one yeah. got cut in half, and they haven't really been able to capitalize since. Yeah, and again, whether they're pressing, whether they're, they're used to putting the ball in the net, and uh, they were exceptional on their execution the first couple times and now they've uh, been settling for perimeter shots not working the ball not not dedicating themselves to the plays that the coaching staff are probably drawn up now that'll be it here for us stay tuned again third and potentially final period coming up between Owen Sound and Guelph here on Rogers TV Hi, I'm David Sherman, host of Politically Speaking. Join me for my next show, where my guest will be Mayor Ian Boddy of the City of Owen Sound. Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. Connection. We all need it. We live for it. It makes us feel like we're a part of something bigger. It makes us laugh cry and scream out for the world to hear. Connecting Canadians has been our focus for over 60 years and it's just the beginning. My husband is a wonderful man and a great father when he's not drinking. I'm so angry he chooses alcohol over us. If he really loved us, he'd stop drinking, right? My counselor suggested I try Al-Anon. I didn't understand why. I'm not the one with the problem, but I'm glad I went. Do you worry about someone's drinking? You are not alone. Al-Anon or Alateen can help. 
Call 866-200-0033 or visit alanon.org slash hope. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit stoptracktragedies.ca. Bayshore Kruger off the post. Oh my goodness, Braden Kruger again, his third straight break in this game. Welcome back to the Bayshore. Owen Sound, North Stars, Guelph Regals, Junior B, OLA Lacrosse. Spencer Byers alongside Steve McCarthy. Yeah, and things keep going uh, Owen Sound's way here. And Elliot Thompson probably won his first draw of the night right to Kruger, who raced in and almost put another one by uh, Fox Cadell. Another good opportunity caught there by Downs, and again, keeping possession, Steve. They've done really well in this last 40. Yeah. Well, last 20 going into the third. Yeah, and again, this, you know, it wears on the defense. They've got to, you know, anytime you have to defend for 60 seconds, you can run out of gas, and if you can stretch that to a third possession, it, uh, again, uh, makes your offense even that much more dangerous. As down went McMahon, they're gonna go the other way as McMahon touches in. But the Regals do have possession, so they gotta wait. And thrown up there to Kelleher. Hands it off there to Charlie Boone. Boone's got one tonight. Boone looking for Kelleher. Shot scores! And Kelleher back on the board, his first goal of the night. Yeah, for the leading point getter and goal scorer. Again, it's just a slip up in coverage and communication. And, uh, you know, the two-man game defense has been a little better tonight, but again, the first possession Guelph has, it, they get exploited, and uh, again, that's something that they're going to have to clean up because uh, this creates too many uh, good scoring opportunities, and Guelph isn't going to miss a lot of them. Face off won there by the Regals. That's their first goal in over 20 minutes for the away side. Brett Vince. Across the top, looking for Kelleher, gets taken down, and Gardner Patakwa off the run. And he can, and there he goes. Gardner Patak stops up, looking for a pass. Can't get one, so now he's just gonna hand it off. Calder Adams. Handed it off, they look like Hempstock. Now Coglin. Off to Arnold, Arnold. Trying to be shifty. Arnold's gonna have to shoot from a mile away, saved there by Fox, and he just swallowed that one up. Yeah, they're gonna wanna speed up in transition and get the ball in the offensive zone with more than 15 seconds to work with, because that seems when their offense stagnates, it gets into one stick, and they kind of press and look and do it all themselves. They need to move the ball, move their feet, and uh, you know, utilize one another. Off the top, Kelleher. Now it's Kelleher, and that shot goes wide. Tried to be retrieved by, again by Kelleher, but taken away. That's Ethan Kirk, who's back out of the box after his five uh, with a little fracas in the second period. One of the two we saw in the second period. Thompson. McMahon. Moran. Sean McMahon now. McMahon looking for Thompson, and that one saved, but a penalty against Guelph, and they have been very at disadvantageous penalties by the Regals so far tonight. Yeah, they've taken some undisciplined off-ball penalties here, and uh, you know, again, a situation where it might have been uh, trying to give uh, Carter Moran a little extra whoop here, and uh, not quite sure where it, where it occurred, but uh, I think it was the last whack there, and it looks like it was the last whack there by Hayden Sabarin, who yeah. will go to sit. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's pretty soft, but I'm sure Owen Sound will take it. Sean McMahon. Tyson Downs. Downs, back for McMahon. Back for Downs. For Moran, back for Downs. Downs, got McMahon, McMahon shot! Save right into the net there. Yeah, they probably want to stop uh, trying to go five hole again. Uh, the goaltender does a good job covering that. He doesn't uh, doesn't expose it, and uh, it's uh, easy pickings. 
Now again, on the, on the man disadvantage there, are Guelph, but they got a chance here close to the net. Ball does bounce off. Yeah. Can call their Adams retrieve it. He couldn't. Can Owen Sound though? They can, but potentially going to go the other way. Again. Obviously something off ball there against Calder Adams. Yeah, that's a tough, tough one. They did a great job, Sean McMahon, good stick to knock that ball loose and create the uh, loose ball opportunity, but um, they're just gonna probably settle in here and uh, you know, take another 30 second chunk out of this power play. But they got some dangerous guys on the floor. Brett Vince has got the ball right now. Vince trying to get around, lost possession of it, and now the ball go the other way. And that is now Gavin Downs. Downs will walk it. And now he'll bounce it to Moran. Moran. And about 45 on the power play, 15 on the shot clock. Moran. McMahon. Tyson Downs. Downs back up there for McMahon. McMahon back for Downs. Downs shot save. But Thompson right there. Again, not a lot of, not a lot of, uh, movement here with the ball or with the feet so uh for there for arnold arnold winded up on that one but save but he'll get back possession thompson mcmahon mcmahon back for mc back to moran moran scores corner moran hot trick yeah that was a well placed shot just under the glove inside the post and uh Again, that's uh, Carter Moran coming through in crunch time and you know puts them back up by one. And uh, again, if you can continue to uh, capitalize on these power play opportunities, you're, uh, you're going to give yourself a chance. Well, Steve, I'm going to use a, I'd say quite obvious saying, but a saying I think deserves to be said. Your best players need to be your best players in crunch time, and Moran has been that. It's now Kruger. Deep in the zone, the captain fires. I thought he airmailed it. He did. Now it's Coglin. Coglin, off to Carter Moran as Fred Wallace said in the building. 43rd of the year with that hat trick goal. Moran shot right into the net there, and I thought Fox almost puts that into himself into the net, but he was able to keep that one just out. That ball, the airmailed over. That yeah. looked to be Cam Weldon and or Weldon, pardon me, and now possession back to Owen Sound. Yeah, Guelph is uh, uncharacteristically little sloppy and undisciplined right now and giving uh, opportunities back to Owen Sound. And a great pick by Noah Hemstock on the last uh, offensive set. Sprung Carter Moran in for another good look. So Moran, top down save there by Fox Trudel. And around come the Regals. And now here they come again. Parker Locke now. Locke hands it off. Boone for Kelleher. Kelleher walks in from a mile, and that one saved there by Nick Sanderson. Sanderson thought about the stretch pass, but will think better and hand off to Trent Beasel. And now Beasel will go. And there goes Trent Beasel. That ball popped out of his stick, however, and the possession will go back to Guelph, and that one chasing with Zachary Wright. Yeah, good play by Wright there to take advantage of Beasel, who kind of outran his support. and. Uh, didn't have many places to look to move that ball and then eventually got stripped. Wheeled on, or pardon me, that shot right into the legs there. That one actually was Brett Vince. And now quickly at the floor, Gardner Patak. Gonna wait up. Nice job there by Gardner Patak. Thinking about it, and he'll hand it off to Joel Coglin. Coglin, Moran. Moran's got 15 to work on the shot clock. Moran for Sean McMahon. For Tyson Downs, back for McMahon. Almost got picked, but right there to Moran now. Five to shoot. Moran from a mile away. That one saved. Can Moran retrieve? He cannot. So the Regals have a chance here. At least it looked like they did, but now they're going to have to turn off. It looks like, and they will. And that'd be Trent Gilbert with possession now. Who will hand it off? And that is Marcus Kelleher. He's only got one goal tonight. Leading goal scorer and point getter in the OLA. Boone, around, across. I'm not sure he caught it. I must have missed it there, but he probably had Sanderson beat. Kelleher now from a mile away, save there by Sanderson, who will just trap it in the orange paint and hand it off there to Calvin Stewart. Stewart. And a nice play there by Gavin Downs, who got in the shooting lane and forced Keller to shoot around him and had to take a little off his shot. And, you know, those are not likely going to beat the goaltender from that distance. Arnold, trying to get around. Arnold, shot, 
stepped in and a good save anyway there by, by Ty Fox. And he'll airmail it, miss. Can Owen Sound retrieve? They can, and uh oh it's own. And I believe that was taken there by Calder Adams. Adams has also been really good in that transition game, limiting these Guelph Regals. And Steve, you gotta wonder if Guelph maybe thought this game be a lot higher scoring than it is, and maybe that's why their offense is kind of lapsing. They're a lot, you know, lower than they usually expect to be. Again, the fourth highest scoring team in the Western Conference. Yeah, they just seem to, again, since early in that first period, not been able to get into a rhythm. And it's gonna be... Yeah, they got an illegal pick called on uh, on Tyson Downs there to spring, to uh, spring uh, Curtis Arnold open and uh, it's gonna go the other way. Dalton Evans now, or Dal Dalton Evans, pardon me. Off now to Brett Vince, Vince. Kelleher, Kelleher thinking about it from a mile away, or pardon me, that's Orpano. Orpano's gonna lose it, gives it off those shot, great save there by Nick Sanderson. And now Mitch Stevens gotta get rid of it, you think. Stevens gets hooked and loses it and possession will go the other way. Yeah, again, in transition, you gotta find that open space, get out of traffic uh, so you don't get stripped and give those extra opportunities. Boom. Looking for the shit, looking for a chance there. Up the top, that shot by Orpana, saved there by Sanderson, will let it bounce into the net! Yeah. Again, he's unfortunate there. He had it locked up and uh, should have asked the referee for a whistle when it was caught up in his equipment. Didn't do so, and uh, as he turned, he knocked the ball in his own net, and that's, uh, that's a tough one. And I'm but not sure who's getting credit. I think it would be Orpana. So that's Owen Orpana's second of the night. And you didn't see there, as the faceoff again is won there by the Regals. And about halfway through this third period, we're tied at six all. Marcus just, Kelleher. Again, you just you can't allow guys like Orpanga to shoot, irregardless of what is left in the shot clock. You can't give up that uh, time and space because uh, bad things happen. As fluky as that one was, it was it was based on a shot that should probably have never been allowed to get through to the goaltender. Slowly come up through the North Stars, and here they come now. Morrison. Back and now it's forward. That's McMahon now. Yeah, McMahon's really got to come through here. He's set up a couple of the goals, but uh, you know he's a guy that can put bury the ball, but uh, he's got to get in the situations to do so. Morrison, right down. Coughlin scores. Joe Coughlin. Talk about a quick response for Owen Sound. And that was again an excellent two-man game. A little pick and roll. And Coughlin uh, went to the net after, you know, setting that pick. Defenders got locked up. It was a one on, two on one, and he buried under the glove far side. Just a well-executed play. Talk about a miscommunication there by the Regals. Defensively, they just let the second leading point getter on this North Star team have way too much time and space, and he made the Regals pay. And back up by one now, Owen Sound. Up top for Kelleher. Down for Boone. Boone. Looking for, his, looking for his opportunity here. Kelleher open, doesn't pass it. Boone got a second runner, but missed the pass and taken away. But that looks to be Tyson Downs. Downs is going to run it because he's an offensive player. And Downs is going to try to wait, I think. Or pardon me, that's actually Owen Pryor with the interception. He passes it off now. And Owen Pryor, definitely not a transition player, though. But Moran for Arnold. Arnold, great save by Fox. But Moran sees it. Moran will retrieve it. Again, another good opportunity for Owen Sound to try to hold possession. Coughlin for Moran in Gretzky's office. Moran, around he goes. Moran, shot to the legs. Saved by Fox. Yeah, again, I don't think that that's not the place to go, as we've uh, talked about before. Fox does a great job of covering up uh, the five hole with the Woody, and uh, he rarely flinches, and uh, it's going to be tough to beat him between the legs. Trying to get around. They will. In. Scores! Dal Dallin Evans ties it back up for 12 7 all. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I mean, Calvin Stewart got 
Taken out wide and uh, badly beaten on the play and with no support left behind them uh, and a clear path to the net. So again, you just, uh, you gotta, you know, you can't get beat underneath that close to the net. And uh, unfortunately, Nick Sanderson uh, lunged out, but uh, really had no opportunity to make the save. Thompson will lose that face off, did Elliott. And you got to mention on that defensive lapse was Calvin Stewart who got beat. He's one of the better defenders on this Owen Sound North Star team. Yeah, you just can't uh, can't give up that kind of real estate. You always want to not allow the player to beat you underneath, push him back up where you might get the support from uh, your other defenders on a slide. So. Fitz looking for Kelleher, and that ball goes missing as Kelleher went to stop up. And Fitz thought he'd keep going. Now giving off to Pryor. Pryor just going to take up the real estate. He's now going to hand it off to Gardner Patak, who mishandles it. Can Gardner Patak get away here? He will. And he gives it off to Moran, who off the retreat as well. Yeah, this has been a problem, too, with they're taking way too long in transition. So, Big man. They're already at eight seconds, and they've just gotten in the offensive end, really. Just really set up now. Coggin from a mile away. That one bounced wide into the stands, and that one will go the other way. Oh, and pardon me, too many men. It's staying with Owen Sound. No, they're going to call a deflection on that shot, uh, which uh, allowed the uh, where the ball went out of bounds, so it will go back to Owen Sound. And then a fresh shot clock to boot, which means that's probably one of the best outcomes for Owen Sound after that miss by Coughlin. Downs, Morrison, back for downs. Tied 13 to work now. Got Moran, Moran, back up for Coughlin. Cog is going to have to shoot from a mile away, it looks like. Trying to get around, he shoots it well wide, and possession will, pardon me, what a shot! And that one also goes wide, that one was by Tyson Downs, but a great opportunity again. Downs has been dangerous for the white shirts. He has there, but again, their offense, again, tends to stagnate, as we talked about earlier, when it takes them so long to get down there. They did get the second 30-second clock, but never really moved the ball, and didn't get a lot of touches, and, uh, you know, they want to make sure that they take advantage of any time they get that second or third uh, offensive look off the same possession. Beasel now up for Carter Moran out the save by Nick Sanderson. We're tied seven, all with about 6.20 left in this third, potentially final period. Moran for Curtis Arnold. Arnold taken down, trying to get to Morrison, bounces to that looks to be Elliot Thompson. Thompson's gonna have to shoot from a mile away. He fires it into the corner and the Regals will retrieve. Yeah, the Owen Sound offense is really out of sync here. So uh, they're gonna have to, get, again, get a lot of touches out there, get everybody feeling good and, uh, you know, start moving your feet in a situation where you can help out your, uh, your teammates by springing somebody loose or cutting to open area. Trying to get an opening here was Brett Vince. Up for Luxley like Kelleher. Kelleher trying to get a shot away. Pardon me, that's where Panna shot saved by Sanderson and shot clock goes regardless. So that will now go to Owen Sound, and that's Braden Kruger. Kruger, that ball's quickly up. Gardner Patak got away for the offensive guys, however, and we'll hand it off to Moran. Yeah, that was a much more controlled transition. So they uh, will have a lot more time to work with here. Moran, McMahon, Morrison. For Tyson Downs, Carter Moran. Three to shoot, that one right into the net and saved again by Ty Fox. Both offenses seemingly very stagnant here in the latter half of this third period. Yeah, well, Owen Sound is continuously coming down and they keep the ball up top where all the defenders can watch their man and see where the ball is at all times. They're gonna wanna get that ball down low, get the defenders having to turn to pay attention to their man and to look to where to find where the ball might be. Uh, oh, and a high stick will go against Owen Sound here as the ball is still loose, and it looks like it'll go against Travis Morrison, and this could spell very bad for Owen Sound. Yeah, again, just not having the ability to cut that guy coming up, turning around on the corner and cutting that top off. When you start having the chase, you got the slide came the other way, and uh, he brought the stick up, slid up the shoulder and into the neck. So this will be a... Huge kill here with 4.34 to go, and it'd be uh, and, and sad to see them give up the lead here on a, on a somewhat innocuous play. So. And, and poor Trent Beasel's going to sit for it. I think the call was obviously against 17, Travis Morrison, but they awarded the penalty to number seven, Trent Beasel. So 
That one goes Beastle, and now Belf on another man advantage. They've scored one for three so far tonight. Kelleher's shot, that one off the leg and saved by Sanderson. Back for Kelleher. Got Boone. Boone back across for Orpana. Orpana. That shot low and saved by Sanderson and held in the crease there by Owen Pryor, who ends it up to Carter Moran. Carter Moran, dangerous at any point in the game. Moran, though, gets held up by Kelleher, and he'll just fire it into the netting of the score clock. Again, that's the last thing you want to see happen uh, is to not be able to clear his own man down with 10 seconds. It just turns that ball over to Guelph too early in the shot clock, early in the penalty time, and uh, again, they're too dangerous to give this extra time to. Or Panna, around the top, back for Boone. Boone across, just could not one time it there was Dylan Davey, and they're gonna give possession the other way. What was the call there, Steve? The, uh, they, had the own, they had the Guelph player going into the crease. And Moran with a great opportunity here in transition. I think it was saved, but now again, here come Guelph. Yeah. Quickly in transition, again, the other way. It's hard to blame Carter Moran for trying to score there, but it wasn't a, it was a one-on-two situation. He might've been better off to eat up 30 seconds off the shot clock this late in the game, rather than do a, a forward Guelph. There you go. And Kelleher makes it his second of the night, and now it is 8-7 in favor of the Regals. They finally got that perimeter shot to work, Steve. They've been trying it for the past couple minutes here or so, and they haven't been able to beat poor Sanderson, but on that one, Keller and finally found the spot. Well, yeah, Owen Sound had two possessions, and they probably didn't have the ball more than 15 seconds during that penalty. In both cases, unfortunately for Carter Moran, he was the player who had the ball once. He was unable to clear the zone. And the second time he opted to shoot in a, you know, an off-balance manner, and uh, you know they marched down with that extra time, and uh, were able to take the lead here late in the game. Good craft after the face-off win for the Regals. Barpana into the middle. That ball bounces wide as Sanderson will retrieve. Gardner Patak gets hit, does get around, and does gain possession. He will hand it off to Kruger, I thought, but no, he will not. He will hand it off there to McMahon. McMahon, got 10 now to work. McMahon around his guy. McMahon hands it off, downs, shot. Did he go? It didn't go somehow, almost. It beat Fox, but not enough. Yeah, and come the Regals. it's a good, nice pass by Sean McMahon, but I think as he turned the corner, he had an opportunity to go right down the middle and opted to pass off to the side, and although uh, it almost trickled in there, he probably gave up a better scoring opportunity. Kelleher now getting harassed. As he gets put into the boards, now Boone around Stewart. Boone, save, but he steps in. Great save by Sanderson, nevertheless. And there comes Calvin Stewart. A minute 50 left in this game. Owen Sound's got to find out at least one more. Thompson. Off for downs. And again, they're going to want to get that ball down low, have the defenders have to turn right now. They also have an isolation situation. Just And Downs will lose it. He's got to shoot quick now. He's only got five to work. He'll fire it. Four. That looks to be Thompson. Thompson trying to get it to Conklin. Just couldn't get it there, but now... Guelph can chew this clock to it under a minute, which again makes you wonder when will Sanderson go to the bench for the extra attacker? Yeah, they're gonna wanna try to create the, the turnover here because the possessions as with the clock now is pretty much two for one for Guelph. So Owen Sound's gonna wanna shorten the shot clock and uh, get the ball back as soon as they can. That, sh that passed across. Evans around his uh -huh. guy, Evans, shot! and steps in regardless, so they lucky there for Owen Sound as they're gonna wait up here. And a timeout taken by Owen Sound. Well, that's a great timeout there by Owen Sound. Now they have 55.6 seconds up on the clock. Yeah. And they're obviously gonna pull Sanderson, so it'll be six on five for Owen Sound for the last minute or so, unless they give up the ball. Yeah, you've got it, you might as well, uh, you gotta use it. They might have been uh, better suited to get down with a, take a quick shot and force uh, Guelph to play with 40 seconds or so. So Owen Sound might end up with that last possession, but nonetheless, uh, be interesting to see if they're gonna choose to go six on five here with 55 seconds to go, knowing that if they uh, 
turn it over or anything. Turn it like over that. or uh, are clock. unsuccessful in the shot clock. They will be facing a facing an empty net. Although there's there plenty of plays you can run where there's a a player that uh, once he's executed his off ball uh, play that he is uh, assigned the duty to get to the bench and allow that goalie to get back in the net. Well, so. Sanderson will stay. So it will be five on five. Leafs well, start off with. They've got six players on the floor, so they better uh, get this dealt with. Yeah, the goalie is going to go and is going to get to the bench. So they almost uh, blew things in here, and uh, now they've got four on the floor. So uh, well, Sanderson's going to stay. It looks like. Okay. Well, I think they've uh, any element of surprise has been blown there. So uh, we're going to go six on five from the get go. Moran. Coughlin, Thompson, Moran, Thompson, Coughlin for Moran, Moran, shot blocked, and Thompson's going to have to go to retrieve it, and Thompson trying to start a fight here, but that's definitely not an advantageous position, Moran though, up front, Coughlin, saved by Ty Fox. And that, that should be the game there, well for call the timeout, and uh... Yeah, I'm not sure what the uh, idea was. Uh, Owen Sound had three guys all in front of the crease, kind of bunch things, and looked to set up a far shot, perimeter shot from Tyson Moran, but uh, they drew a lot of bodies in front of the net, and he really didn't have a clear look. So you know, now they're likely going to probably pull their goalie and go six on five to defend and try to get that ball back. Otherwise, uh, you know, Oh, looks like they're going to go five. No, here comes the goaltender yet. Yeah, so they will go six, six, and they'll go two men on the ball. They've got to do a good job right off the bat of locking off their check, not giving an opportunity or an outlet for, in this case, uh, Keller to, uh, to uh, you know, move the ball. They may also want to make sure they keep the goalie in check because he may wander out of the crease and be an outlet as well so as you see there he's already kind of out there in the face of sean mcmahon and Owen sounds done really well though in the uh, i guess never mind there for poor uh ty fox strudel but regardless oh it's done a pretty good job in the passing lanes we'll see if they can do it here quick so they got to get possession as ty fox are trying to get a pick away downs and McMahon there, stop him up, but he's going to turn back again. He's just going to chew the clock here. And he's just happy doing it. And it looks like, oh, it goes down, well, covers that's up. That's a handball. It should have been a whistle. The referee in there missed it, so. Uh, and the possession will stay with Guelph, and that will be the game. Yeah. And immediately Tyson Downs arguing with the referee there, but a handball, but regardless, the Regals will leave with a victory that Owen oh, is gonna feel hard done by they didn't get. Yeah, they certainly again proved that they can play with some of the top echelon teams in this league, but uh, again, they come up a goal short here and, uh, on a number of times this year. They've, uh, they've uh, been on the short end of games by a goal or two, so. Definitely not the way Owen Sound would have hoped, especially being leaders till about three minutes left in this contest before Kelleher and the Regals were able to take back the lead and eventually take the win here in Owen Sound. But they've played just about everybody close here, Steve. They've played Six Nations close. They've played Alora close. They've played, I want to say, St. Catharines close earlier this year. They've played Guelph close here tonight. They seemingly play everybody close, but not close enough, if you will. Yeah, well, when you have limited uh, offensive power, you uh, you just really can't make a lot of mistakes. And unfortunately, uh, again, late in the game with the, the man down and two opportunities to grind out the the penalty kill, they uh, they turned the ball over, and that uh, that ultimately came back to haunt them. So that's a tough lesson to learn, but. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to forego scoring opportunities in order to manage the clock, and uh, you know, in this case, it didn't happen. Well, I do want to mention, though, defensively, Owen Sound seemed a lot sharper than maybe normally we've seen throughout this year. They only allowed eight goals to, again, this fourth-ranked offense in the Western Conference, 12th. They did a really good job, especially in that second period, not allowing a single goal. 
in the second period. They did a great job defensively tonight. Yeah, they did. Again, uh, they got uh, beat a few times in the third period on you know a couple uh, two-man game situations. Again, just little breakdowns. Unfortunately, they got beat on a one-on-one -on -one play off the boards and went directly to the net and scored. And and then the fluke goal that uh, Nick Sanderson, you know, had it caught up in his equipment and, and knocked it in his net when he was trying to find it and didn't get any help with the referee, who ordinarily in those situations blows it down. You could see uh, referee De Bruyne had the whistle in his uh, mouth and almost uh, made the uh, <laughs> the oxygen pass through the Fox 40, but it didn't happen, and then for, and it came uh, at an inopportune time when he kicked it in his own net. Now, Owen Sound's offense, again, in spurts, was really, really good here tonight. But again, seemingly when the game got really down short, it seemed like they just weren't able to execute whatever may have been drawn, especially in that timeout with 55 to go. Yeah, I think uh, Owen Downs was the catalyst to the offense all night. And uh, in the third period, when they started to uh, stagnate again, it got very static. Uh, the ball was just staying in one guy's stick, and they were really much looking at the perimeter. Uh, not working off ball in tandem with their other weak side uh, offensive player. Yeah, that really hurt them again. So, uh, you know, they, they only scored seven, although at times their offense did look a lot better than it has all season. And their, uh, their counterpart in net came up big, especially the first half of the game. He was uh, really tough to beat. So, you know, they have lots to, to feel good about, but uh, unfortunately it doesn't show up in the win column or the standings. And, uh, you know, it's looking seemingly more likely they're going to end up in eighth place. Yeah, they need to get two straight wins and hope for a loss so they can jump up into six spots. So that might be gone now as, again, they do end the season against St. Catharines, who are, again, a top-tier team in the Western Conference. But oh, even one win will tie them again with Cambridge if they win their last game, which will again tie them for seventh slash eighth to play either Mohawk or Alora, And I think everyone can admit with, again, this this uh, Rebel team being 19 and 0, our Six Nations, they are the team that no one wants to play in the Western Conference. Yeah, I, you know, again, it, we, we talked earlier about, you know, the top six teams are all real tough, but, you know, uh, Six Nations obviously going on a, a, you know, potentially unbeaten season, you, you know, the, the odds are stacked heavily against you in that situation. As good as Alora is, you prefer to play them than, uh, than the Rebels' first uh, first go around. So. Yeah, and, and I wanted to mention here, and tonight I think it's a great example. Alora is the least scored against team in the Western Conference by a, quite a bit, might I add. So their game kind of fits what Owen Sound wants to do. They don't want to play shootouts like I'd say this Guelph team wants to be in, like Cambridge wants to be in, who are right beside them, might I add. And again, that Six Nations team want to be in. They want to be in tight games like this. And if Alora is the team they face, it might be a matchup that they really do like, as Curtis Arnold told me earlier. Yeah, I no doubt. I mean, they've had two two real competitive games against them and uh, if they can play second periods like they did tonight when you have that long change and a lot of times in this building as we've seen with the senior b team it can be the undoing when you can't uh, compete in a transition game and uh, you know they they did a real good job tonight so they won that transition game in the second period they're gonna have to own that uh, no matter who they face because they do lack uh, a lot of the firepower that some of the top teams do have and that will be it here for us. Hopefully, Owen Sound will be able to get in that seventh spot against Delora, but we will see two games left in the regular season before the playoffs will start, and they are guaranteed one home game in the playoffs, so at least we will get it to see at least one home game playoff. So for Steve McCarthy, I'm Spencer Byers. Thank you so much for watching us here on Rogers TV. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media.
Are you the type who would keep going or stop? It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca. I have a really big passion for dance. I get a little bit bullied at school, and I'm never going to let anyone stop me. You made new friends with us right here. <laughs> I think that there are limitless possibilities to what we can achieve. Yeah! You are a star.